I'm Frank Withrow. Uh, my business is called Reasons for Rhyme Poetry with a Purpose. The website that we're working under is poetfrankwithrow.com. Today we have a fantastic gentleman uh, that's going to uh, work with us and talk to us a little about bullying and a little about educational inspiration. Uh, he's a counselor out of uh, Stockton Unified School District and uh, just an amazing young man that uh, grew up in California. He's a California native from Willows, California and uh, has done some fantastic things. And I'm gonna let you let him tell you about himself, who he is, and give you a little background on himself. Hi, my name is uh, Victor Torres, and uh, I'm a 26-time world arm wrestling champion, 10-time United States national champion, 27-time uh, California state champion, including 16 years in a row, uh, and I've won 128 career titles right and left-handed. I've also been world champion over parts of three consecutive decades. Uh, I've won at least one title for 20 consecutive years as well as parts of three three decades. Um, and I just kind of want to share with you my story today as far as uh, you know how that came about. And basically I was born and raised in, in poverty, a little town called Willits, California, up north near Ukiah, Calpella, Fort Bragg. And my mom and dad came from Mexico uh, many years ago, back in the 50s, um, because they were pursuing a better life for themselves. And my father wound up uh, beginning working as a American farm worker. And you know, I, as I was raised in that town of Willits, um, I wound up going to school. And I think the tough thing for me was I got bullied from kindergarten all the way through my senior year in high school because I was shy and I was quiet, um, wore glasses, I was thin. Uh, so, you know, a lot of strikes against me. Uh, and uh, my dad was also, you know, even though I loved my dad, my dad could get kind of abusive sometimes too. Uh, but my dad also had a, a real good side to him. He, you know, I thought he was a very wise man. And I think a, a key uh, struggle that I had was in fourth grade, you know, I was goofing around, not really taking school seriously. Uh, and, you know, I, in my, I got my first report card and I wound up getting, I think, an F in math. Uh, like a D, I think it was in English, and my dad saw my report card, and you know he almost went through the roof. He said, "Son, I don't send you to fail. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you with me to work in the fields." So I'm out there with my father in the hot sun, and uh, I believe we were picking, uh, I think it was grapes at the time, and he would turn, and he would turn and say, "Son, you see how difficult it is out here. Uh, you know the, the working conditions. You know, you, you know, it's, you know, very sweaty, very poor pay, long hours." Uh, and you know, so you don't, you know, no breaks. You know, and I remember experiencing that too. And uh, and my dad would turn to me at an opportune time and say, "Son, if you don't do well uh, in school, this is your future with me the rest of your life." And I remember it really scared me. I, it's like I saw a vision of myself in the future. Didn't like what I saw. Almost I, kind of makes me think of the Christmas Carol and the Ghost of Future <laughs> <laughs> shows. Uh, you know, shows that you know that the Scrooge, you know, was up and coming if he doesn't change his ways. So that really got my attention. That was the best thing my father ever did for me. And I remember when I went back to school, um, I remember I was determined to give it my best effort. I never really tried my best, and uh, and I was really surprised to see that I could do it because I, I think I had heard for so many years, you know, that you're nothing but a dumb Mexican. You never amount to anything. And you're you know wet back, go back where you came from, and uh, you know, but. This time, I, I think it was the fear that my dad put in me because I, I knew my dad followed through with corporal punishment if I didn't show improvement. And so that was definitely a motivator too. And, uh, but I saw that I could do the work because like anybody else, I was actually shocked and pleasantly surprised. And so it made me work even harder. I saw my grades began to go gradually. It started getting C's and B's and an occasional A here and there. And then I found out to, uh, and I was a really good speller and I loved to spell. And then I remember my dad came for a conference with my teacher and he was bragging to my dad about, you know, how he, he, I had just, you know, just like changed drastically overnight and he couldn't believe what was going on. And it was all because of my dad, for what he exposed me to. And so that was a, a breath of fresh air, um, you know, to see that I, could, I had potential. And then all of a sudden I just really enjoyed learning. I, I enjoyed acquiring knowledge and, uh, and seeing that, you know, maybe I can do something with this. Unfortunately, when I was in seventh grade, I got jumped by ten bullies. Fortunately, all I got out of it was a nosebleed, so I was fortunate. That, uh, that, that, that's hold up right there. Let's go back to the education for a minute. So your dad 
he talked to you and showed you. He didn't only just talk to you. He took you to the fields and showed you what it would be like in the future. Absolutely. If you did not improve what you were doing. So this preparation is what he was doing. He was preparing you, uh, not just for right now, but for the future. Now, do you see our society today preparing our kids the way your father took time out to prepare you? You know, I'm glad you asked that because as I look back on my life, first of all, I realized that it was my father who gave me that strong work ethic in school by the strong work ethic that he exposed me to in the fields. And as a school counselor for the last 23 years, many times I've, I've actually gone to my principal or other educators and said, you know, I wish we could do a field trip where we take a bus and we tell these, you know, these, uh, you know, these farmers, hey, how about free labor for a day? You know, can we take, of course, you know, you're dealing with <laughs> a lot of <laughs> child laws, labor laws yes. and, <laughs> you know, and of course, in a dangerous, a potential dangerous situation. But, you know, I do not, I do not see kids uh, really, you know, going for it like I would love to see them go for it. Too many kids are unmotivated. Uh, you know, they're just barely skating by, and it's really, it's a really sad thing to see because and there's so. In my experience, most most people don't fulfill their potential. So, the older people understood. It's called common sense. It's uncommon in 2012. Absolutely. But the older the older people had a little common sense. It's like they would say. Uh, leave him alone, let him touch that stove, and then he won't touch it anymore because you would burn yourself. Okay. Reality they, therapy. Yeah, reality. They would <laughs> constantly say, don't touch it, and then you keep trying to touch it. And then once you touched it, you realized. So once he took you to the fields, he got you to see, number one, that what was important. And like you said, I, was, I respected my father enough to go at least try what he had told me. And then when you tried, you found out that you were good at it. So now you believe in yourself as a young person. So you started being successful. Is that, what I, is that what I heard from you? Absolutely. Okay. And as you became successful, you started to like education? I certainly did. Okay. And you stopped believing that things that people said, because I think you said they told you you were just a dumb Mexican. Absolutely. So then you understood that you were a smart person. Didn't matter what color you were or what your heritage was. You were just smart as a person because you had a brain just like they did. Absolutely. And I think that's what we're trying to get to the young people today. You as a counselor, you took education and you gave back. Now you have not told uh, them what you accomplished within your educational goals. So after you finished high school, what did you do and how many degrees and things do you have? Well, I think what was significant about high school was um, First of all, <clears throat> my mother was also played a major role um, because she was the most uh, you know, loving person I've ever met. And she would tell me often, son, I believe in you, you can be whatever you want to be. And I just really took that to heart. My dad was more kind of a tough love approach. My mom was very loving and kind and compassionate. And then when she got leukemia and she was dying during my senior high school, that was a real tough blow to, to absorb. But the last thing she said to me before she died was, Siegel at school, I was meant kept going to school, keep going to school. And that was my, that was my focus. And so I wound, wound up uh, applying to <clears throat> the college, Sacramento State University. And then from the time I would graduate from high school till the time I would graduate from college, um, I wind up winning, I think it was 17 scholarships and grants. <clears throat> I graduated with honors from high school. And I would go on to receive a master's degree in marriage, family, and child counseling, a master's in school counseling a bachelor's degree in Spanish, a bachelor's degree in social work, and three community college credentials, one in psychology, uh, one in counseling as well as counseling supervising. And I recently graduated from the Los Rios Community College District um, at, I think it's called Multicultural Diversity Training Program to become a college uh, professor. Right. And, uh, and most recently, uh, I wound up writing my first book, it's called Armed for Battle and Destined for Glory. The subtitle is called Learning How to Bravely Confront Your Past So You Can Be Launched Into Your Future. And I actually entered it into what's called the Global Ebook Awards contest uh, this past year. And it wound up being uh, selected for, as a finalist for uh, Best Christian Ebook of the Year. <clears throat> it came in second, and I finished amongst the top five as a finalist for Best Autobiography 
So I'm really thankful. It basically gets the story of my life <clears throat> and how I came from you know rags to a much better life. Um, so that's that's kind of my background as far as my credentials and so forth. Okay, but see, uh, young people need to know that you were able to not only accomplish educational goals in elementary, junior, and high school, but you didn't just get one degree and stop. You have two bachelors and two masters and then some other junior college <laughs> credentials. So it's important that they understand that education is a lifelong process and you just don't stop it with one degree. You continue to educate yourself. Now, as we talked about, you know, you, you doing education, we also haven't gotten into the 27. Oh, is it 26 or 27? Uh, 26. 26 arm wrestling championships. Now, what got you in? Uh, was this something that you started in college, getting motivated to arm wrestle or what? Tell us about that. Yeah, the, the 26 world championships. What happened there was I, I, I just... <laughs> I got tired of being bullied as a kid. Okay. And uh, you know, that's just, I, I mean, like I was sharing a little bit earlier, seventh grade I got jumped by 10 guys just because I was different, shy, quiet, you know, just, you know, Mexican, American, um, got bullied, harassed in high school, uh, went to college, came back as a, uh, after my freshman year, I worked in a gas station and there was a bully um, who came wanting to get gas at the end of the night when I had locked everything up and it was just a little sliding glass uh, window that separated me from him and I explained him that I couldn't sell him any gas because I was just getting ready to leave and he tried to grab me through that little window and threatened to beat me up, swore at me and I remember him from high school because he was, he was a bully back then too. <laughs> <laughs> Something's never changed I guess. And uh, so I remember walking home, my heart is just pounding because I'm, I'm feeling so scared. A lot of adrenaline push, you know, happening inside me. I remember saying to myself, that's the last time any bully will ever mess with me ever again. I'm going to go to Sears. I'm going to order myself a 100-pound weight set. I'm going to get bigger and stronger. And I did that. I, I trained fanatically. And about six months later, I began to notice differences. I was at this at, during the time when uh, I actually discovered, you know, Bruce Lee, some of his movies in the early 70s. I was inspired by how he, he wasn't a big guy like me. He was just thin, but he was, you know, very muscular, very cut. Um, and he was able to defend himself against bullies. And so I just trained really hard. And then um, when I got back, I started working out with my friends, my college friends in the dorms. And then we started arm wrestling for fun. That was, I guess, their idea. <laughs> and, uh, and they mentioned when I said, Vic, you know what? We think you have a gift because you never lose and you beat us fast and we're, we're a lot bigger than you. Maybe you should enter some tournaments. So that's kind of how it started. And I entered some tournaments. Didn't do real well when I first started. I think I lost my first seven matches over the course of three or four tournaments. And I would lay off for about 10 years. Then I would eventually come back. And I, at this time, I joined an arm wrestling club. And these guys taught me all kinds of moves. I also saw the movie Over the Top, Sylvester Stallone. And that movie really inspired me. And so I wound up adopting this top pull move that he popularized. It was already around, but he actually popularized it more so because he's such a big screen star. And that's kind of how it all started. And I remember that, that I chose to use my strength in a positive way. I didn't go out and I didn't go out and join a gang. I didn't go out and look for fights. The only way I was going to fight is if I was pushed into a corner and there's no other way. I, but I, I really looked at uh, arm wrestling as a sport. It helped me to channel my anger in a proper way. And you know, I did meet some bullies in arm wrestling along the way, but I usually earned their respect after I beat them on an arm wrestling table. So anyway, so that, and I really feel, and my experience is that for a man, Especially, well, even as you know, as growing up, no matter what you achieve, if you don't have physical respect from other guys, you don't have respect. You just don't. That was my experience. I didn't, I, and they didn't care how educated I was. It's it, still the experience. It, Males, except now, it's not so much physical that they'll get a gun. Exactly. When we grew up, you fist fought, and if you lost the fight, you just went home, and you got talked about a couple of days. Uh, you wouldn't practice till you could beat the guy. <laughs> yes, and you, yes. Know, you said what it reminded me of. I remember when the guys would fight uh, after school. We had like the woods right, oh, yeah. uh, right next, next to the school, and everybody would go over there and, and, and watch the guys fight. The fight's over. These guys got their arms right. All right, yeah. man, I respect you. Uh -huh. Nobody jumping in. No. No. Okay, fair fight. Good job, man. You know, let's, let's be friends now. Now, do you think maybe that's from media? 
movies, video games, uh, because uh, now it's totally different. Uh, one is fighting and the whole group jumps on them or something. Yeah, it's really sad. Yeah, I, th I think it has a lot to do with it. Now that's called group bullying. Absolutely. Yeah, so. And you know, one thing that I've noticed too in recent years, um, you know, the cyberbullying, because I, you know. Oh yeah, cyberbullying is. Yeah, big time. Being a school mm -hmm. counselor now for 23 years, I, I remember when I worked at Fremont Middle School in Stockton Unified for 14 years, um, when I first went there, we had a huge billing problem. I was asked in my interview, you, you know, can't, are you familiar with conflict management and could you start a conflict management program? I said, yeah, actually I worked in Oak Grove and I, I worked with some of the best people and they taught me how to do that. So I went up setting up a program and I, and I would basically uh, look for the very, the, the kids that had good attendance, good citizenship, good grades, cream of the crop, and I had trained 30 to 40 of them per year. And we helped over 7,000 kids in 14 years, average over 500 a year, um, just dealing with bullying and, you know, what they call love triangles. Yes. Um, uh, you, know, you know, dating issues, you know, friendship issues, those kind of things. And so, you know, it, it was big back then, but now what I'm hearing more than Mr. Torres, I'm, I'm getting bullied even when in my own home, which I think is just amazing. I just can't believe the, how tenacious some of these bullies are. It's well, do you think maybe we should go back to some of the old values we had? That would be wonderful. because uh, So maybe we need to do some parent training. We're doing student training as far as the bullying is concerned, but what could we do to do some adult training with the parents? You know, I think the parents really need to be aware that that there needs to be a lot more monitoring of their children because the, typically the kids that I deal with who are often in trouble, there is not, and as I probe about what their, their backgrounds are for, I'm not hearing that their parents are very available. And with that, and I understand it's tough. I mean, nowadays, uh, you know, it's pretty much a necessity for two parents to work. And when I was growing up, my mom was always home when I came home. I was, my dad was the breadwinner. That's really changed <clears throat> immensely since since I was a kid. Um, and, I, and I'd like to see more kids involved with sports because I see too many on their own or they get sucked, sucked in by the gangs. Uh, and they, they're just easy prey. And in fact, I, there's one student I work with and I said, hey, so what do you want to do when you, when you grow up? Because uh, you, know, you, know, you can't live with your parents forever. I said, Mr. Torres said, I'm going to die in my early 20s. I said, why do you say that? Well, because I'm part of a gang and I can't get out. And that's all I know. And, He's not, you know, he's kind of behind with his schoolwork and so forth. And I thought, wow, that is so sad. And I, and I thought of another friend that my friend Rayford knows, um, and he said the same thing. He asked him, what do you see yourself doing in the future? And he told him the same thing. He said, I, I, I'm not going to live past 25. And it's almost like they're prophesying into their future, and which is really tragic. But I, I know that um, we need to have more parents involved as well because we need <clears throat> we need them to steer them in the air, in the air, area of education. And that's why I was talking something about parenting classes or adult training classes, relationships, because our adults need to understand what they need to do. Uh, when you and I grew up, uh, grandma lived with us, aunts and uncles lived with us. So all the adults would teach you how to be an adult. Uh, now we have these dysfunctional families. So don't Everybody doesn't doesn't take that commitment to train. Some take you in the wrong direction. When you and I grew up, if it was a bad guy on the corner drinking wine, he'd tell us, you a schoolboy, get away from here. But now, it's come on over and hit this. So we need, as adults, as you said, to do better communication with adults, to teach young adults how to be better. And I think it's called intergenerational relationships. Uh, and it seems that you have some good intergenerational relationships with the young people. So. Yeah, you know what's helped me too is um, every school I've been at, um, I bring my arm wrestling table. I brought it from a professional years ago, Jimmy Payne, real famous arm wrestler, who just died uh, just as earlier this year. Um, and I use it um, as a platform to basically um, you know, reach kids. Get their attention. Yeah, and so just because I'm an arm wrestling champion, they, they respect me, and, and guys I would not be able to normally reach, you know, uh, I'm able to reach them. And so I do like an arm wrestling club during lunch, and uh, basically as a 
means of physical fitness, also, you know, <laughs> it's a structured activity, and that way, less prone to f friends and fight because they settle things on the arm wrestling table. Okay, yeah. yeah. Which, you know, that's how we did in our day, too. Um, so anyway, and I, I, you'll see me off in arm wrestling kids because everybody wants to arm wrestle me. And so I basically teach them moves, how, how to do it. Um, but I really believe that as adults, we have to get in there and do what they do. I even work out with them when they're in a weight training class. I mean, they're doing, doing pulling. One kid reaches and Mr. Torres, I'm embarrassed because you're three times my age and you're doing <laughs> yes. more than I am. Yeah. So I just, matter of physical fitness, I've been doing this for 36 years and, and I love doing it and I hope to do it all my life. So one of my heroes is Jack Delaney, he died at age 96. And even the day that he died, I read that he, he uh, swam, swam for an hour mm -hmm. and he lifted weights for an hour and wound up dying of pneumonia. <laughs> so he really had no sickness or disease. He took really good care of right. himself. And his wife, I understand, is still alive. Uh, so anyway, so but these are some of, some of my role models. You know, and I look at my mom and my dad as uh, my role model, and role models rather. And uh, I just know that it really, I truly believe that uh, the famous adage that it takes a village to raise Where's a child. child. It's so true. You need the school, you need the parents, you need the relatives, the neighbors, you need, ch you need the churches behind you, uh, the educational institutions, uh, everything. Because it, 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 really, it, it really does take a group effort. And I think we, if we don't buy into that philosophy, we're really, we're really uh, shortchanging ourselves. Well, I am certainly glad that I have an opportunity to meet you, Victor, and I'm glad that you got an opportunity to sit down and we got to talk because I feel exactly like you feel and uh, I'm probably a few years older than you <laughs> but it says that something was instilled in us that we need to get back and instill into the entire society so I look forward to uh, talking to you again to working with you maybe to come into the school and uh, do a little tape of what you do video what you do and see what you do I smile because you were talking about I arm wrestle with the kids. Well, I'm called a middle-aged rapper because I rap with the kids. Wonderful. Yeah, so and I, it's all positive. I don't do any negative stuff. Excellent. It's like you were buying it and you do it well, but we only have two options, death or jail. You go in the store, you take what you want, and cameras are posted all over the joint. You have no respect for the police. You sell drugs openly on the street. I said, you're a buyer. You do it well, but you only have two options, death or jail. The system set up for you to fail. You'll get locked up or be dead in hell. So it's powerful. this positive stuff, you know, trying to reach them where they are. Because, you know, they'll listen to the rap. If it's athletic thing like arm wrestling, they'll pay attention to it. So we have to reach them where they are. It's been a pleasure talking to you well, today. Sir, thank you. I really uh, appreciate that. I just want to the, say that the, if anyone wants to stay in touch with me, I have a website. It's called armforbattle.com with the number four. I write a lot of articles that deal with emotional healing, people that have experienced loss, death, divorce, uh, bullying, and we address that as well. And my friend Rayford Johnson did a video recently on me. It's called From Victim to Victor. Basically, my life story. did a fantastic mm -hmm. job on it. Uh, but I just shared that just to encourage people. And my book is also available uh, through my website for anyone who maybe needs some inspiration to really go for it. In their well, there's one thing I heard coming out of you was your spirituality. We didn't get a chance because of short time to talk about the importance of spirituality in the church and God within your life. But we'll make sure we take some more time to deal with that next time. Oh, that'd be wonderful. All I appreciate right. that. All right. Well, God bless you. God bless you too, sir. Thank you so much Thank for you. having me. Well...